If you're under the age of 18, don't come over to this area. <laughs> this, this, I wasn't putting up our posters for any promotional purposes. It was... Uh, never mind, you know what they are. Okay, so I don't want to ins exclude anyone who may not know the book, but I'm going to make the, the, the quiz about the book, and I'll make the poster one easier. All right, I'll give away this book right here. Right here. Okay. What is the name? Don't shout it out. We've got the honor system. I want hands up. What is the name of the distasteful little troll? Oh. <laughs> Promoter and hotel owner in Calgary at the National Hotel. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. You don't know. Get out of here. Anybody? Did I make it too hard? No. Okay. Bob. Good guess. <laughs> Caesar? Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 He wanted more books. There, pass I've only got four. <laughs> <laughs> you should have come earlier. He was giving them away. <laughs> All right. I'm going to make this one easier. Same thing. Same thing. Hands up. Don't shout it out. Make this one easier. What was the name of Divine Weeks before it was Divine Weeks? Me. Deal Weiss, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. Great. Step on it, too. I think I'm going to go over one Okay, well, Kimberly, that's, uh, that's going old, old school. Um, summer. Um, what do you guys want? Excerpt or song? We got them both. We got them all in our arsenal. Song. One of these. Song? Live September. Only if Dave brings his drums. It's only me. <laughs> what, what, what's the vote? Excerpt and song. Okay, excerpt and song. Okay. Right, really, I'll do, I'll do <laughs> since, since we're uh, Since we're talking about the distasteful little troll named Caesar. Day 9, 8587, somewhere in the Canadian Rockies. <coughs> we leave straight from the club and hit the road for Calgary. Seventeen hours, we're told. The rest of us are trash, so Raj takes the first shift driving and I join him in the front passenger seat while everyone else sleeps in back. Up front, one drives in the so-called navigator's, navigator's job is to make sure the driver doesn't not often kill us all. <laughs> Unless you're completely zonked and just want to sleep, there's a little competition for who gets to be up front because the three in back are packed in like sardines, laying in opposite directions, so you've got someone's feet in your face all the time. There's no windows back there, and we've, so we've taped to the ceiling posters, postcards, assorted one-liners, inside jokes, and other odds and ends. Any diversion from having to stare at each other endlessly. Plus, it's like a sauna in back. No ventilation, and frankly, it stinks. Talk about getting to know each other intimately. We don't even bother to lie and deny it. Everybody knows each other's farts. Where no one wants to get stuck is the spot closest to all the gear, which is stacked up high to the roof of the van. It's pretty harrowing when we hit a bump or a big turn, and whoever is stuck in the unenviable spot under the teetering pile just stares up, praying an anvil case doesn't come down and crush it. <laughs> Deep into the Canadian Rockies just before dawn, I about have a heart attack as I wake up to Rod shouting over and over, Oh. My God. I look over and Raj looks like he's just been hit by something, madly looking around in every direction. I remember getting gas a while ago, he says slowly, but I don't remember the last 20 minutes at all. It's, scary. it's a miracle more bands too are like this aren't killed. The all-night drives, the drinking, the come down from the high of the show. That's how Dee Boone of the Minutemen died, asleep in the back of a van and went off the road. We finally pull into Calgary. It's only about 6.30. Only about 17. They said it was 17 hours, only 16. Like that. <laughs> the Winter Olympics are coming here next summer, and it's obvious that the city is trying to clean up all the sleaze and riffraff to a small two-block area around a dump called the National Hotel. The Nash. 
where the red light shines brightly. Naturally, that's where we're playing and staying the next four nights. Simply put, the Nash is a hot pillow joint, a brothel. They rent rooms by the hour. The owner is a distasteful little troll named Caesar. <laughs> he shows us to our rooms and tells us very matter-of-factly to be careful sleeping under the sheets. We have a nasty case of crabs going around, so be careful, boys. As we walk down the long corridors, it smells equal parts smoke and piss. Doesn't seem like anyone's actually, actually staying here, any more than an hour, that is. Calgary is an old cowboy stop that still hosts the Calgary Stampede every year. Like a time warp, real cowboys still roam these parts. Makes for an interesting population mix. A hip, arty, intellectual college crowd mixes uneasily with old high plains drifters. Or as the locals call them, dirtheads. Caesar tells us he's unilaterally moved back our three-night run of shows here until tomorrow night, so he goes downstairs to check out the band playing. The banner behind them says, UIC from Toronto. After their set, they invite us back to their table where they give us the scoop on touring Canada. They say you get booked to play these hotels for several nights. You play two sets a night, the hotels put you up for free, and then pay decently, better than the clubs actually. Then they give us their take on the Canadian welfare system. They just cruised through Vancouver, picked up $150 Canadian worth of food stamps, and now are headed back to Toronto. The guitarist says it's not socialism, it's taking care of your own. We'll drop that sentiment in Mr. Reagan's suggestion box, Ian says. Yeah, George cracks. You can keep company with all the other social reform programs gathering dust in there. We talk well past closing and about have to crawl back to our rooms. Heeding Caesar's warning about the crabs, we just put our sleeping bags on top of our beds. These mattresses have big sink holes in their midsections. You lay down, it's kind of like having your ass get sucked down an imaginary drain. You can't get to sleep. Somebody's getting all they can for their hours worth next door. The paper-thin walls leave little of the imagination. Can't tell if somebody's having the time of their life or if a damn homicide is going down. It finally grew silent, so I poke my head out into the hallway but see nothing. I turn head back into my room when a door flings open and this Amazon-like woman walks out. I can't help but staring at her tits, barely covered by a tank top. If they were drooping any lower, she'd be kicking them like a couple of soccer balls. <laughs> she looks me up and down and then roars, What in holy hell are you looking at? Oh, you're alive, I did, Pam. <laughs> Don't worry about me, baby, she says, lighting a cigarette, but you might want to check the pulse of the motherfucker I just worked over. Should I tell Caesar to call an ambulance? Or the morgue, I say, turning to head back inside. Hey, she says right before I close the door, I'm good to go again if you want it, baby. I just closed the door, entirely too frightening. <laughs> And now for something completely different.